it only takes a split second and it's eerily silent. According to the CDC, childhood drownings are the number one cause of death for kids ages one to four. A few weeks ago, it almost happened in Poway. A family was in town from Arizona visiting relatives when their curious two-year-old opened a door that normally has an alarm on it. The problem was the alarm battery was dead. And what happened next? Even doctors call a miracle. Twirling around and singing along, two-year-old Mia Preston is busy. Busy smiling, dancing, splashing, busy being two. I can't imagine that she wouldn't be here. On a Zoom call with Mia's parents, Aaliyah and Nick, it's clear they're still reeling from the accident. Last month, while visiting Nick's parents in Poway, Nick was watching his four children when the doorbell rang. In that momentary distraction, Mia went missing. I got a little bit more frantic because I was running out of places to look. And that's when I looked through the window and saw her body floating down, you know, not moving. Nick pulled his daughter out of the pool. No pulse, no sign of life. But he suddenly remembered CPR from a workshop he took back in high school. Poway firefighters were called. This is the worst call you could possibly go on as a firefighter. Captain Jonathan Marshall says all life-saving procedures on baby Mia were immediately started. She was quickly transported to Rady Children's Hospital. CPR status the entire time. So 20 minutes of CPR administration was probably the most traumatic that you would think she would be brain dead at this point because of that. Take a look at this video. Doctors in Rady Children's critical care unit said looking for purposeful movement would be the first positive sign. Dr. Helen Harvey says this time of year through summer, they see several children come into the ICU after an accident at a pool. In the moment a child has lost a pulse, they perform chest compressions and you're pumping blood to the brain. And that's the most vital organ to preserve in all of the chaos. For days, Mia started showing more and more hope. Ultrasounds didn't reveal anything major, and astonishingly, an MRI of her brain revealed no damage. It seemed like one doctor would come over and bring two or three to follow, and they're like, yeah. and how long was this under? This doesn't yeah. make any sense. That's amazing. On day nine, Mia was released, hugging Dr. Harvey and her nurses on the way out. Sometimes in the pediatric ICU, it can be very sad. And so those moments when you have a child come back to the ICU, walking, talking, being their normal selves, and then they give you a hug, that it makes everything worth it. You pray after a call like this for a great outcome. And uh, unfortunately, we don't always see that happen. And in this case, uh, it, was, it was an absolute blessing to see and actually meet the mother and the child and the, to see the, see the little kid just perfectly healthy. Her nickname now, Miracle Mia. In today's world, I don't think we see a lot of miracles. I don't think I've ever seen a miracle this big in my life. And now she's walking around in our house every day, <laughs> proving to us that they exist. If you think about this, baby Mia underwent more than 20 minutes of CPR started by her father. It continued nonstop, even while she was at the hospital. Dr. Harvey says that is the one thing that prevented a tragedy in the story. And if you are interested in taking a CPR class, we put up a link to a list of classes in our area on our website. Go to CBS8.com and click on the help button. And that's really all the inspiration you need to go take a class. I know, and to think that he remembered what he had learned 27 years ago as a high school student, all of a sudden not realizing this much later, it would come back immediately. And again, it was because he started those chest compressions that she had no brain damage, which was a miracle. And he saved her life. Saved her uh, life. It's un unbelievable. And, you know, people, we, we talked about this. The first line you had in there was the fact that it was silent, eerily silent. People, we, we see TV shows and movies, and we have this image of people drowning, like splashing. But the experts tell us kids, when they go in, it's, it's quiet. It's quiet. And, and you won't notice. So. No one's yelling, no one's splashing. So it's make sure hands. that you have that fence around your pools if you're ever going to have children around, or make sure everything's locked up. That's scary. Whew, wow.